Chapter Number Eight of Welsh Fairy Tales and Other Stories by P. H. Emerson. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Charlotte Duckett. Chapter Eight: The Story of Gellert. It was somewhere around twelve hundred. Prince Llewellyn had a castle in Abba, just abreast of here. Indeed, parts of the tower remain to this day. His consort was Princess Joan. She was the daughter of King John. Her coffin remains with us to this day. Llewellyn was a great hunter of wolves and foxes, for the hills of Carnarvonshire were infested with wolves in those days, after the young lambs. Now the prince had several hunting houses, sorts of farmhouses. One of them was in a place now called Beth Gellert, for wolves were very thick there at that time. Now the prince used to travel from farmhouse to farmhouse with his family and friends when going on these hunting parties. One season they were hunting from Apa, and stopped at the house where Beth Gellert is now. It's about fourteen miles away. The prince had all his hounds with him, but his favourite was Gellert, a hound who would never let off a wolf in six years. The prince loved the dog like a child. And at the sound of a horn, Gellert was always the first to come bounding up. There was a company at the house, and one day they went hunting, leaving his wife and child in a big wooden cradle behind them at the farmhouse. The hunting party killed three or four wolves, and about two hours before the word passed for returning home, Llewellyn missed Gellert, and asked his huntsman. Where's Gellert? I don't see him. Well, indeed, master, I've missed him this half hour. And Llewellyn blew his horn, but no Gellert came at the sound. Indeed, Gellert had gone on the wolf's track, which led back to the house. The prince sounded a return, and they went home. The prince lamenting Gellert, he's sure to have been slain. He's sure to have been slain, since he did not answer the horn. Oh, my Gellert! And they approached the house, and the prince went into the house and saw Gellert lying by an overturned cradle, and blood all around the room. What? Has thou slain my child? Said the prince, and ran his sword through the dog. After that, he lifted up the cradle to look for his child, and found the body of a big wolf underneath that Gellert had slain, and the child was safe. Gellert had capsized the cradle in the shuffle. Oh, Gellert! Oh, Gellert! Said the prince, "My favourite hound, my favourite hound, thou hast been slain by thy master's hand, and in death thou hast licked thy master's hand." He patted the dog, but it was too late, and poor Gellert died licking his master's hand. The next day they made a coffin, and had a regular funeral, the same as if it had been a human being. All the servants deep in mourning, and everybody. They made him a grave, and the village was called after the dog Beth Gellert, Gellert's grave. And the prince planted a tree, and put a gravestone of slate, though it had been before the days of quarries. And they are still to be seen to this day. End of chapter eight. The story of Gellert.